Hello, welcome back to smarthelping.com. We got a cash conversion cycle model. Uh, super simple to follow, and it should show you some logic to figure out how to do these calculations. I've driven, um, I've gone deeper into the calculations than just putting the average days for each of the three main uh, categories of the calculation. So you're going to see the bottom up uh, math here. I've also done a monthly tracker up to five years by quarter and I've done a whole bunch of visualizations which I'll go through here in a bit. In a bit. So <clears throat> first of all what is cash conversion cycle? It's a metric that's measured in days and is primary primarily used for anybody that's going to be doing inventory management. Um, technically, if you did not have inventory, you could just zero this out and you still get a calculation. And all that's basically saying is how quickly are you receiving money from selling, like if it's a service business um, or rental business, how quickly are you receiving your um, accounts receivable relative to how much, how long it's taking to pay um, your payables. Now, the reason why it's mainly for inventory is because in a business that's primarily um, buying inventory and selling it is that the payables are, are primarily for the inventory you're purchasing, so it makes more sense. Um, but, so the cash conversion cycle is just measure it's a, it's a day measurement and it's trying to tell you how many days does it take for you to buy uh, an item in inventory how many days does it sit in the inventory and then once it's sold how many days does it take to collect those accounts receivable in, into cash and then finally how many days does it take for you to pay your payables that were used or created when you purchased the inventory initially, which in that last one subtracted off the first two. And the net of all three is your cash conversion cycle. It can be negative, which I thought was a cool concept, but of course, if your payables, if you don't have to pay for the inventory you're buying, and let's say it's like, you know, it, it, on average, you're, you're taking like 200 days to pay for the inventory because of the terms you've got, and you're collecting it. Um, well, this would still be 297 in this case. So let's say you had a uh, 300-day payment terms, which would be kind of crazy. These numbers are just made up. Um, you'd have a minus three cash conversion cycle, um, essentially meaning that you actually collect all the money three days before you have to pay for anything. Here, it's saying it's 230 day cash cycle, so it means when cash goes out, it takes 230 days for you to sell and collect, sell inventory and collect uh, the, the cash from accounts receivable. So it's a pretty, and when you get into how these are calculated, it gets kind of complicated, but essentially, the, um, you want to make sure the number of days you're doing, you could do any time period. You want to make sure that the sales, uh, revenue, cost of goods sold, uh, beginning and ending inventory, cost receivable and payable are all the same as this period. So if I put this for 120 days, I would need to adjust all of these calculations um, and dollar values um, to be for 120 days instead of 90. And what these calculations down here do is say, well, if your average inventory is this, um, and it takes in 90 days, you had cost goods sold of this, it's going to take you 158 days um, to sell things essentially sit in inventory for 158 days. Uh, for sales, for days sales outstanding, you're looking at the receivables in relation to revenue in the same 90-day period. 
and it's saying if your average receivables are this and this is your revenue being created then in theory it's taking you 140 days to collect on receivables and then finally payables outstanding uh, it's looking at the cost of goods sold in the period and the average accounts payable in the period against the number of days and it's saying here on average it takes 68 days um, to pay for inventory and that's because if your average is 375,000 you had a cost of sold at 500 that means that every 68 days you are paying for you're paying for the 375,000 okay so cash conversion cycle metric the lower the better and it can be negative uh, lower generally means efficient but you got to think about what it's in rel relative to so usually this metric is something that's comparative over time or comparative to other sectors or other um, similar inventory businesses and because of that I made a monthly tracker and the user can go in here and put in um, it doesn't have to be quarterly you could change these days to any period just make sure that your inputs here in, in yellow in the yellow are for the period you're measuring um, but you simply enter revenue cost of goods sold I just put in a gross profit and a margin here just I figured we've got the data might as well show this um, then you're beginning and ending inventory for each period beginning and ending accounts receivable and beginning and ending accounts accounts payable and the number of days in each period and once the user fills that out you get the um, days inventory outstanding day sales outstanding days payable outstanding and those are added up to get your cash conversion cycle once um, that's done I did some conditional formatting here to show if it's greater than or less than a goal so a higher number than the goal is bad so it's red a, a smaller number is green that's good I did a visualization here um, so each bar is what adds up to the actual so um, this plus this minus the payables equals this yellow value and I thought it'd be cool to kind of combo like to show how this yellow line is being calculated and the goals just whatever the goal is and above the goal is bad below is good then we did some more visualizations and I really wanted to make this a very easy tool to use in a lot of output value so we've got this is the visualization I just went over but look at this one the quarterly revenue and cost of goods sold I thought this was cool looking um, a lot of time spent on formatting this uh, quarterly CCC percentage to goal so this again shows uh, here these negatives are saying you're eight percent over the goal and here you're 15 percent under and lower is better so you want to be in in this chart the higher the bar positive the better because that's saying how much percent you are below the goal quarterly CCC actual versus goal so this is the actual numbers not just the percentages and the num the bars in front you want to be lower than the bars in back because the bars in back are the goal and you want obviously to be lower than the goal because that's better uh, then I just threw in some charts based on like we had gross profit so I figured if the data is there might as well visualize it so I did that I did the mar uh, gross profit margins and then I also did the average inventory payables and receivables um, quarter ending to show um, what those numbers look like I just try to basically put visuals on all of these data points so that's pretty much it um, it's going to be available for purchase at smarthelping.com as well as other vendor sites and it'll be a one-time fee of $45 uh, if you have any questions email me and I'll see you on the next one